Hello everyone, Brandon here with gdntbasics.com and we have another question from our video question line. Today's topic, profile of a line, the tolerance zone. Our question today, if we are giving a basic radius of 10 millimeter and on the radius we are applying a profile of a line tolerance of 0.6 millimeter, what will be the max and min size of the radius and what will be the tolerance zone? I read somewhere that if profile of a line is applied to a basic size, then it controls size as well. Thus, the radius can now have a max size of 10.6 and a min size of 9.4, and at these sizes, the tolerance zone will be equal bilateral of 0.6 millimeter. Is this correct? Another interpretation is that the true size is 10 millimeter, and my radius can vary from 9.7 to 10.3 millimeter. These are the max and min size. Please tell me which is correct. This question came to us from Amar. So the answer to this, uh, Amar, is quite simple. The latter, uh, or the one where you said another interpretation, where the result is 9.7 to 10.3 millimeter, is the correct answer. Uh, but let's take a look at why that is. Okay, so before we look at our sample drawing here, I wanted to bring up the wall chart here and show this to you guys. If you aren't currently using the wall chart, if you haven't downloaded it, I re highly recommend that you go in there and download this wall chart. It's, it's a great resource. It has all 14 symbols on here, a lot of rules and stuff about GD&T around the uh, perimeter of it. Uh, but relating to this specific question here about the tolerance zone, if you look in the profile section, which is purple, um, up here I have zoomed in here and kind of highlighted it here. Um, it's still a little bit uh, hard to read at this point. Um, this is an 11 by 17 format, and we do recommend you print it out in 11 by 17 and laminate it. So I've zoomed in here and I've shown uh, the, the tolerance zone over here, which is, like I said, this is right off the wall chart. So if you ever have a question about tolerance zones, and this goes for any of the 14 symbols, um, if you come over here and look down this area here, this is going to highlight the tolerance zones for all 14 symbols. So like I said, a great resource. Um, this can answer a lot of your questions right away. We love to answer your questions on here, but if you need something right away, this wall chart, um, you don't have to do a lot of reading, go straight to it. It's going to show you that for profile of a line, um, you can see here that it is two dimensional. Um, you do have two parallel profiles, um, but notice here that it says here that it's 30 thousandths apart. Uh, we're going to, in our sample drawing, we're going to be looking at this a little bit further. Um, if, you, if you look over here at the, up here in the top left, it's going to show that the profile of a line tolerance up there, and I know that this is hard to see, but we're going to go over this more in a second. Uh, it's, it shows that it is 30 thousandths in there. Uh, everything in GD&T as we've taught up to this point, um, when you see that tolerance in there, it is a total tolerance zone. So this isn't a plus 30, minus 30 kind of situation. This is a total of 30 thousandths. So let's look at the definition here, and I pulled this right out of the course. So for all of you that have been through the course already, this is going to look very familiar. Um, the first one here says this control specifies how far from the true profile the cross-sectional surface is allowed to deviate. So unless otherwise specified, the tolerance zone is a uniform or equally disposed boundary about the true profile. This is a 2D uh, tolerance zone, which I already stated, and you can see it here. Um, it's shown right here as being two-dimensional. Um, instead of going all the way across this surface, which would be profile of a surface, this one is strictly, um, it's a line element or a line profile. So this is, uh, it applies normal or perpendicular to the true pro profile. So it's important to note, and I'll show you this in the drawing, that the view that it is applied in is the, uh, the direction that the tolerance will apply. The last one here, all line elements of the reference feature must lie entirely within the tolerance zone. So you should know that already, but um, it shows here with it being 30 thousandths apart over here on the left. 
any uh, probing on this surface that we would take, it has to fit somewhere inside of those uh, two lines. Those two line elements are the tolerance of them. So let's take a look at our, our actual sample drawing here uh, up on the next slide. Here is our sample drawing. I've placed it down here on the bottom. Um, I did put in there, excuse me for that. I did put in there up at the top. I put in the uh, statement here pulled out of the course uh, and from the standard. Profile of a line when used with a full DRF, a full datum reference frame, uh, will restrict size, location, orientation, and form. So um, going back to that sloth that I was talking about earlier, this will and can take care of all of sloth. Um, now, this does mean that it would have to have the full datum reference frame and the basic dimensions in order to define it. So if we look down at the drawing here, um, here's where our profile tolerance is, profile of a line. And if we look at how the outside is defined, um, it's with basic dimensions. So we see A is this bottom surface here. It is qualified with flatness of uh, 0 0.08 millimeter. And then when we look at the um, secondary datum, we have two holes here uh, with diameter of uh, 9.1 to 9.2 millimeter. And they, are, they have a position tolerance of 0 0.1. So it's diameter symbols in there. So it's a cylindrical tolerance zone. Uh, and that is in reference back to A. So this will establish our secondary datum. This does lock everything down. Uh, there's no other datums required for this. Uh, our six degrees of freedom would be locked down with just A and B. So going back to the profile tolerance, profile of a line, we have 0 0.6. So if we were just looking at the radius, and Omar's question was uh, originally about just a radius. So just looking at the radius, um, our tolerance zone coming around this radius on the outside that would be adding material to it our tolerance zone on the inside would be taking away removing material but the total distance between the two on the tolerance zone the width of the tolerance zone itself is going to be this stated 0 0.6 so just looking at from the radius here and i'll get rid of this other one just to clarify this make it a, a little bit clear so just going around this radius if we were look at the dimension from the true profile um, out to the outside tolerance zone we're looking at only half of that 0 0.3 so this is equal bilateral as they stated um, in the rule about uh, the profile of line tolerance and the way that it's distributed there is no u symbol here we're not talking about um, unilateral or unequal we're not talking about that. Um, nothing's in that datum reference frame other than just profile line with a total tolerance zone of 0 0.6 in reference to A and B. Now they do have the all around symbol on here, so I wasn't neglecting that. The actual tolerance go zone goes all the way around the part. And that would be for the 0.3 out, and that would be adding material. And then, of course, all the way. And now, you know, this is exaggerated. And these, uh, these lines aren't perfect here, so cut me some slack. Uh, but we have that exterior and interior, or adding material and removing material. Um, but the total width, no matter where you go around this, or the total distance between the two, is going to be 0 0.6 millimeter. So... Uh, we don't double it. This this isn't a uh, plus 0.6 minus 0.6. That's not how it works. Um, like I said uh, previously, these tolerances that are in here that you see right next to the geometric control, these are total tolerance zones, um, and they are equal bilateral. So we don't get to add anything in there. Um, it's just 0 0.6 MR. That's 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 what the actual tolerance zone is. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, and by the way, because this is profile of a line, if you're watching this video and you're not familiar with profile of a line yet, because it is um, placed on this view, 
Um, we see it in this view right here. That means that the 2D um, tolerance zone that we were talking about, um, we come over to this right side view over here. And the way that we look at this is it would be sliced right here. And we would be checking this profile, but it would be a 2D slice somewhere right about in here. And then another one, you know, this is at the discretion of quality. They get to, they get to choose this. Um, it can be dictated in, a, um, in an inspection plan. Normally that would be something agreed upon with, um, if, if, it's, if we're going to dictate it, something agreed upon engineering and quality of how many uh, inspection sections we're going to take. Um, these are independent of each other. That's why um, it, it states in our course and in the standard, it's pretty rare to see profile of a line by itself. It's normally used as a refinement to profile the surface. Um, but when you do see it, this uh, normally is going to indicate that this is some kind of um, extrusion or something like that, where we're not trying to control it down the length of the extrusion, um, just at any given cross section. And we want to maintain that shape at any, any given cross section. So like I said before, um, because of this basic dimension here of, of 10, the radius of 10, that is what's going to hold its um, size. Um, it's also going to hold its shape with the tolerance zone there. Um, and it's going to do this all the way around the part. But just remember, if you're an engineer out there, designer, draftsman, and you're applying this to a drawing, and you're using profile of a line by itself, um, these are 2D. And when quality is going to take this one, they're going to take the measurements on that one, and then they're going to move over, take measurements again on this section, do another one here and possibly another one here. Um, if you're wanting it all to be controlled together um, as one entity, then you should be using profile of a surface. Um, and you could go back and do the refinement, like I said, with profile of a line. Um, but again, if, if it's an extrusion or, or something like that, you know, that type of manufacturing process, then, then we do see profile of a line. And we see it a lot of times by itself um, because we wouldn't, this has a length of 20 millimeters, but let's say that this was uh, 10,000 millimeters long on an extrusion. Well, the 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 bow and all of that would that would be in that entire length of that extrusion is going to be kind of excessive. But it's something that we're probably not going to try to control with GDNT. We're going to leave that up to the to the uh, the extrusion association to dictate to the manufacturer what those requirements are. And, and not ASME, not GDNT. Um, but we can do the profile of a line to make sure that this shape here is maintained no matter how much bow there is in the entire length of the extrusion. So that's profile of a line. Um, thanks for listening today, guys. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, make sure you send those questions in to questions at gdntbasics.com. Uh, appreciate it. You guys have a good day. Talk to you later.